A huge problem in the world is water scarcity and just access to water. One in six people uh, in the world are lacking water. So we wanted to create something that generates water locally on site and that's cheap so that it's accessible to everyone. What we're trying to do is harvest water from air. We hope that the device will be able to produce one liter of potable water in a day, so in 24 hours. There are a lot of challenges. We've heard this is a very challenging project from our professors. We all really want to see it work. The first thing that happens is we're using a desiccant. So a desiccant is a chemical that tends to absorb water. These desiccants have a natural affinity for water, so they, they literally pull the water out of the air. So what I'm gonna do is take a mixture of these two desiccants and put it on these trays with the burlap. These will go outside overnight and absorb water, and then in the morning you'll have kind of a solution of the desiccant and the water, and the burlap is here to kind of help absorb the water that gets collected by the desiccant. It'll become a little puddle basically. So where we are in the project is we've built one full version of the prototype. That prototype is uh, basically a cardboard box with insulation and an interior lining. So essentially what we've created is a solar oven. What this does is it captures the sunlight in the form of heat. So it gets to temperatures around 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, like an oven would. So think about it like absorption has happened. You have this desiccant water mixture, and you're putting it in there. Inside that box. Inside that box. And the oh. idea is that it's going to be heating up, so then just the vapor is going to escape, right? And the vapor is then going to condense into the water. So this whole thing needs to get to that temperature. <laughs> oh, it's already so warm in the box. So essentially what we're doing is we're using a desiccant to collect water, we're heating it up, and then we're cooling that back down into liquid water. We've tested that outside as well as inside in different conditions, and we found that there's some limitations to our system. So it's not getting up to the temperature that we want, or the fluid in the system is not moving where we expect. And so where we are right now is we're running smaller tests on the system that we have to determine what that next version of the prototype looks like. This is a very experimental project. Do an experiment and get out there and get your hands dirty. One of the unique challenges is that we're trying to understand the science behind the system at the same time as going about the engineering. There's no simple formula for like, you know, if you do X, you get this much water. It's more complicated, it's dependent on a lot of factors. And I think that we've gained a really, really great experience in terms of how do you tackle a problem that is really not well defined, but has really great potential impacts. Like the idea that we could produce potable water with the system that we've really built, started building in the past few months is really exciting. Yeah, so we have about four weeks left to build the final prototype. So it won't be a cardboard box, it'll be more two by fours, plywood, um, proper insulation materials. It'll look more like a finished product, in other words. It's been really great to do the more physical things. Being a senior, the progression of COVID like really took out the time in which normal engineering students do the most hands-on learning. So it's been really nice to kind of just see how product development works. Being able to work with my hands and like make these processes work by kind of just fiddling with things has been really exciting. We spent our first semester mostly working on the absorption stage. We got a lot done there and that's looking pretty good for us. In the solar oven stage, we probably spent most of the semester working on that. That's been a more recent uh, challenge, but it's probably going to work. Okay, okay. So we're assuming that in that area, as far back as we can get it, that's going to be the hottest point. Yeah. And that's where it's going to evaporate. Yeah, right. It's gonna be iffy. We'll see. Inside air temperature is 51.9, and then our um, air temperature inside our box 
inside the metal box is 34.6. I think if we can get it to like 80, it would be very, very, very slow, but I think it would evaporate. Okay. Um, did, did it go, did it spike at all when I pulled it back? I mean, the peak we got was to 60. Right now it's increasing to, to about 60, 59.4. So our goal by the end of the year was originally one liter of water. Let me bring the bucket. Just... Oh, oh. The condenser trough is like dry. So that means that the water didn't evaporate, condense on this lid, and then fall into the condenser trough, which is unfortunate. But the fact that this environment is so, so humid and warm is very promising that it has been evaporating. We just didn't have enough time. We didn't run the test long enough at temperature. I think it's anticlimactic in the sense that it would have been great if we like opened it and we're like, oh, we have it's all this water, it's evaporated. Yeah. None of us are like surprised. Are shocked that it yeah. This kind of happens with this sort of research-like work. You set out to do something and then you end up not getting fully there. But to me, as long as you know, you're learning something, even if you're learning that something doesn't work, that's valuable. And so I think that our project was a lot of chaos and it was a lot of understanding as we were building, but I think that was the beauty of it. Something I love about working on this project, it's hard to think of anything without first saying that I love working with the team that I'm working with. Tess, Gayatri, Carla, everyone really cares about the bigger picture. We all wanted to have some sort of a humanitarian application in what it is that we developed. We're all really passionate about things that help people. What can you do on a small scale that could be really impactful and really beneficial to people um, and the world?